In this video, we'll look at the equation for iron to hydroxide plus water. So the question is, if we put FeOH2 in water, what happens? So iron to hydroxide, iron, that's a metal, and then this hydroxide, OH, this hydroxide ion here, a group of nonmetals. It's an ionic compound. Often ionic compounds are soluble, but we should look at the solubility rules here. So as we go down, we're looking for the iron to ion or the hydroxide here it says most hydroxide salts, like FeOH2, are only slightly soluble in water, with a few exceptions here. So iron 2 hydroxide should only be slightly soluble in water. If we look this up on a solubility chart, it says that it's insoluble. So we know that this iron 2 hydroxide, not much is going to happen when we put it in water. Only a very small amount will dissolve. So we take our solid iron 2 hydroxide, that's what we start out with, we put it in liquid water and not much happens, but what does dissolve is going to split into its ions. The hydroxide ion, that has a one minus ionic charge on the whole thing. Since we have two of them, this is going to have to be two plus. So we end up with Fe two plus, that's the iron two ion, and we'd have the hydroxide ion, that OH minus. In fact, we'd have two of them. So let's put a two here. Since these are dissolved in water, we're going to write Aq for aqueous after each one. So this is the equation for the little bit of iron 2 hydroxide that will dissolve in water. Sometimes you'll see the H2O above the arrow, and that's okay. Sometimes you'll see it here written on this side of the equation too, but since we have this aqueous, that means that this is dissolved in water, so I don't write it again at that point. So this is Dr. B with the equation for FeOH2 plus H2O. Note that it's only slightly soluble, so only a little bit of it are going to form these ions. Most of it will just fall to the bottom of the beaker or test tube. Thanks for watching.